Welcome to Baritone Blues. In this series, we're going to look at playing the blues on the baritone ukulele. We'll learn some songs, we'll learn some chord patterns, and we'll learn some fun turnarounds, little fancy intros and endings, and even some solos. To get us started, we're going to learn a pattern that's common through lots and lots of blues music, the 12 bar blues. And we're going to learn it in the key of E, which sits really nicely on the baritone uke. Plus, of course, it's a key that lots of guitar players like to play the blues in. So, if you find yourself with some guitar playing friends, you'll be able to play along with them. To play a simple 12 bar blues in the key of E, you're going to need three chords. The chord of E. The chord of A, which you can play like this. Or with a bar at the second fret and your little finger on the fifth fret of the first string. And the chord of B7. Now first of all, let's just look at the 12 bar pattern and get those chords going together with a simple strum. Here we go. One, two, three, four. E. Here comes the A. Back to E. B7. And back to E. And maybe a B7 on the end if we're going to go round again. But some blues don't do that and they just stay on the E. So that's our basic pattern for a 12 bar blues and there are many, many blues tunes that follow that structure. But it doesn't really sound much like the blues. So what we're going to need to do is add some extra little twiddly bits, some turnarounds and also think about the rhythm that we're playing. The blues is nearly always played with a shuffle feel. What do I mean by that? Well, if we play our down strokes on the beat, one, two, three, four, we can put a strum in between those with an upstroke. One and two and three and four and. In a shuffle rhythm, we make those upstrokes late, like this. One, and two, and three, and four. It's like a heartbeat. Ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. Doing that is really going to start making this sound much more bluesy straight away. Another thing we can do is try and make the second and the fourth beat of our strum a little bit louder. One, two, and three, and four. And one, two, three, four. So we're emphasising what we call the back beat. That's where, if we had a drummer, the snare drum would hit. Or if people were clapping along, that's where they clap their hands. What we do need, though, is something called a turnaround. And you will have heard this a lot used in between verses and maybe as an intro or even as an ending. A turnaround is really just a way of getting us back to the top of the progression so we can start all over again, which is why it also makes a great intro. When we use it as an ending, we alter it slightly so it doesn't make us want to go back to the start and do it again. It just wants us to finish. Here's the one I was playing at the beginning. And that's that B7 on the very end that I said when we strummed through was, was optional, but it's quite common to hear on the end if we're going to go round again. Let's do a simple version of that turnaround, and then we'll look at ways we can dress it up to make it a little bit fancier. First of all, take a D7 chord shape. Now we don't have any D7s in this tune, but don't worry, we're not going to be using it just to strum a chord. It's just getting our fingers in the right place. What we're going to do is slide it up one, two frets and just play the highest three strings using the thumb, first and second finger of our right hand. Now that's actually an E7 chord, so it's just another way of playing our E chord, 
but we've turned it into an E7 and found the notes higher up the neck. What we do is we play that, we slide it down one fret, we slide it down one more fret, and then we go to our E chord. So just get used to doing that, play E chord up to the third and fourth frets playing that D7 shape, slide it down, slide it down again, and back to your E. So, where does that fit in the tune? Well, right at the end of the tune on our last line, we had a B7, and then we have two bars left of our 12 bar pattern. And this is where it fits in. E, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then we can start the whole 12 bar pattern again. And you could use that as an intro as well, just playing the last two bars of the 12 bar blues. And then start your song. Finally, we could use it as an ending. But don't go to a B7, just stay on the E chord. So to dress this up, what do we do? Well, you could do a very simple thing, which is instead of plucking all of those strings at the same time, you could go thumb, finger, finger, like this. So your thumb would land on the same beat that we were plucking on, but you would delay your index finger and your second finger. So you get this. One, two, three, four, one. Which sounds really good. What I did, in the intro to this video was a little bit like that. I played all three together. When I slid down, I lifted off my ring finger so I have the open first string and played them all together, but then played the second string. So all together, slide down, lift off the ring finger, play them all, play the second string. Slide down, but don't put that ring finger back play three strings, then put that ring finger back, now it's at the second fret on the first string, and pluck that. So I have this. And I go to my E chord, and that's in the tablature you can see on the screen now. You can really mess around with this pattern. You can mix up ideas, so you could go, you could do that thumb, finger, finger roll on, one of them, not all of them. You could play all together. You can lift off fingers and sort of try and play around with different ways of making this your own. You can also do what I've been doing quite a few times, which is sliding into that chord. So I'm either starting from a fret below or two frets below. Doesn't matter really, because you don't hear the original chord because I start sliding as I pluck. So we get this. And finally, you just heard me then, go to the E chord, but play the open third string and hammer on my first finger onto the first fret. So rather than just going, when I get to the E chord, hammer on to the first fret of my third string. Okay, let's put all of that together. We'll do an intro, then we'll play once through the 12 bar pattern, then we'll do the turnaround, then we'll go once through the 12 bar pattern again. When we get to the end, we'll do the turnaround, but when we get to the very end, we'll just stay on that E chord, not go to the B7. Otherwise we've committed ourselves to going round again. Here we go. One, two, three, four. where our pattern starts. Here's the A chord. Back to the E. B7. 
Here comes the turnaround. And again. Keep that nice shuffle rhythm going. One and two. Here comes the A. Back to the E. B7. Here's our little turnaround, but an ending now. Fantastic. If you want to make that ending a little bit more like I did at the beginning, just to add a a little sort of full stop on the end so everyone's really sure that you've finished. I did this. I took my E chord and I made it into an E7 by playing my second string open, then at the second fret, then open again, and then at the third fret. And I kept my first two fingers down while I did that so that at the end I could strum that E7 chord. Two, one, three, open. So what you get is this. A real classic sounding blues ending. Now don't worry too much about making your turnaround exactly the same as mine. As long as you're doing it in the right place, you can keep it nice and simple, or you can add all kinds of extra little fancy bits over the top like I was doing, and you can make it your own. I hope you've enjoyed this and stay tuned for lots more blues on the baritone. See you soon. Bye bye.